Welcome back to the Torque Test Channel. We feel there's been plenty of quality videos on YouTube showing the power potential of a knockoff Makita versus a legit one. So we're not going to try to do that too much today. What we will be doing and what we think we might have the unique ability to show you is an exact power figure on how much one of these wish wannabes makes on our dyno and perhaps compare its dyno curve versus everything else we've tested. After all, maybe it's less powerful, but is it bringing at least $60 worth of beans compared to other tools? Then again, we're not sure if anyone else making a video on one of these bad boys got the 1000 newton meter version we did. Oh yeah, buddy, you better believe we bought the best from the Wish app that they had to offer from Reng37456 Sings, known for making the best impact wrenches out there. They have a few options, of course, but we didn't want that low or high quality. We want that 1000 newton meter top quality, which is currently $53 plus 12 shipping, but we bought for a steal at $47 or 59 total. 1,000 newton meters equals 738 foot-pounds. The XWT14Z we just tested in our last video is only rated at 430. If you haven't seen that video, check it out first as it goes up against rigid Milwaukee and DeWalt with some dramatic results there. But if 430 foot-pounds is not enough to tackle the 738 of this guy, we have tested the newest Makita mid-torque, XWT18Z, also rated for about 1,000 newton meters by Makita, or 740 foot-pounds, as well as the high torque at 1180 and the XGT three-quarter inch at 1330 if we need to call them in for backup. In order to help this wish deliver the wallop it advertises, we also bought both the cheapest and most expensive largest capacity quote-unquote Makita batteries we could find on eBay. While we did purchase 18 volt, in both of those cases, the cheap one showed up as a 12 volt battery. So that's a bummer, you get what you pay for, I guess. But this huge nine amp hour pack should do the trick. It's 50% larger than the biggest Makita that they sell in 18 volt. We'll be strapping this onto both the real and knockoff Makitas at the end of our testing to see how it improves things if it does. Until then, during most of our tests, we'll be using the standard five amp hour pack we use on most of our Makita testing. We can admit one thing about the Wish Wannabe though, it is at least brushless, no real sparks coming off of this one. Of course, if for some reason the 9 amp hour monster pack is not enough for the wannabe to keep up with its specs, we've also tested plenty of, let's say, more modestly powered tools as well to be able to compare on the dyno graphs. With $61 being about one third the price of a real DTW285 or XWT14Z, let's see if this really is a sheep and wolf's clothing or maybe it's a 1000 newton meter monster worth the one plus month wait of shipping time. Our first test is called Working Torque. Here's the real Makita Mid Torque, rated for similar power as this Wish, with some other options on screen as well that make more meager power, such as the Bosch Freak Impact Driver and Rigid Subcompact. That Mid Torque is insane for a cordless, and the Bosch Driver just edging out the Rigid Subcompact by a little. Let's see how the Wish Wannabe fits in using a real Makita 5 amp hour pack. Well, looks like we didn't really need to bring out that mid torque. Coming in with exactly 100 foot pounds, not able to beat the Bosch Impact Driver or Rigid Subcompact, which are both, well, not record breakers. But that's not the best bit in case you missed it. Here's our favorite part of the day, which coincidentally happened on this guy's first run. Boink. This tool experienced exactly one second of impacting life before rejecting its Makita badge altogether, like the body rejecting a heart transplant. Although this tool could have used a heart transplant, so far it's definitely been selling us a bill of goods with its 1000 number. Let's get into our reverse test though. Who knows, maybe it's a monster there. With the mid-torque no longer needed, let's see the XWT14Z Makita Compact, which is sort of what this tool is going up against nowadays from Makita. And the lowest power Makita tool we've tested, their impact driver from Japan. Here's that. Both some high numbers in their categories for sure. Now where does that Wish masterpiece fit in? Bit of a false start there. 
Oh, that's because the battery literally fell off the tool and it lets them smoke out in the process too. Let's try that again. One fifty seven, well below the Makita driver, basically everywhere. And again, it doesn't seem to like to hold on to its Makita badge very much. Perhaps it's a little embarrassed to be in this company. On to the best case scenario, and then on to the nine amp hour battery too. We're going to bring back the rigid and invite the M12 right angle along for this one because, well, they just have some of the lower power numbers to compare to. Call us pessimistic if you want. Now for the wish, maybe they should rename their app Dream because that might be a little bit more on point. Let's see it. One seventy-five. It passed the tiny four-inch rigid along the way. It actually beat something. <laughs> Put a W on the board. Let's ride this momentum. Time to strap on that nine amp hour pack onto the real Makita and see what an extra row of dubious origin eighteen six fifties can do. Well, that took it from 337 to 337, but some gains down low over the 5 amp hour pack. Was surprised to see that. Perhaps it can even burst some rust free that the real battery couldn't. Now let's see if a fake Makita can be reunited with a fake battery and somehow double things in the process with that symmetry. Here's it versus closest competition again. One hundred and forty eight foot pounds down from one hundred and seventy five. It did not like the questionable nine amp hour battery as much as we thought it would, them both being of somewhat equally dubious backgrounds. Let's see if the rank list agrees that this guy is as bad as we think it is. Starting down here for now, although I doubt it will be traveling much further, the wacky wish had its power runs turned into points as ten, sixteen, and eighteen. It's five point eight inches long, that comes out to 30.2 foot-pounds per inch, really just breaking records everywhere there. It claims a whole 738 foot-pounds and managed 175 of those for 24% or 24 points. However, at just $59, there should be some shining light at the end of the tunnel. It gets 44.5 points as a function of power and price. That totals 142.7, or well, yeah, staying where it is in 10th on this compact impact rank. Closer to the rigid than we thought it would be, thanks mainly to foot pounds per dollar in that column. So for the money, should you buy? No, you should just not buy this tool. As you may know, we do three power runs of each test, and this tool always made less and then even less. Its best runs were always its first run. So if it doesn't literally fall apart on you, you might have even less beans after any real amount of use than we saw today. If it's too good to be true, well, yeah, you know the rest but at least we could provide you with some hard-hitting data along the way. Subscribe and hit like to keep the YouTube algorithm chugging along, and thanks for watching.